Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. You made it to episode six of our Hobbit House build, which is building the arch trusses. This is one that a lot of you are more interested in. I know some of the groundwork and the brickwork wasn't as exciting, but uh, it was necessary. But this is what a lot of people are like, how, how are you building the trusses? How did you do that? So I, um, today's episode is about how we built the arch trusses. And I, I had two different styles that I tried. This is the one that worked. I've got my strips clamped down, including my original one, which turns out it was only about a quarter of an inch. So my first attempt at building these trusses was I, I built a jig to bend quarter inch strips of wood to bend together and then uh, glue and screw together. Fortunately, I did not waste too much time cutting too many strips uh, before I was able to see if this would work or not. Because as I continued to work, I found if there's any kind of knot in the material at all, it was going to uh, break and this was not going to be effective for me. I've decided I'm going to cut plywood uh, into the arches. I'll show you more of that here in just a second, but uh, I'm going to cut arches and then glue four sheets of plywood uh, together. Obviously they won't be able to do the whole length, so I'll stagger where the joints are. But this will be very similar to the eye joists that uh, you have in your home that the lumber yards are selling. They have pieces of wood on either side and just wafer board in between. I could get three arches out of this and they get progressively shorter as I move down. To create uh, the arch, and I want to be accurate, this first one's going to be, I'm going to cut out and it's going to be the template. I'm going to lay the template down on the other ones and mark them. Uh, but uh, what I did is I put a piece of wood, it's underneath it, right underneath the camera, ran it up here and secured it, and then I put a screw in there, and then five feet away is this pencil, six feet away is this, or ten more inches away is this pencil, and I, I've already done it, but uh, I describe a nice smooth arch using this template, or using this jig. All right, I grabbed uh, my usual suspects for cutting the radius. Uh, you know, when you're cutting corners and turns, the jigsaw is what you first think of. Uh, that is not that powerful and all that up and down. I thought I might be able to do a little bit faster with a small blade on my sawzall. But then I realized, you know, this radius is so wide and it's not sharp that if I lower my blade to just a half inch the thickness of the plywood, it's not very wide as it goes through here. And I think my fastest and smoothest cut will be if I take uh, my circular saw and drive it through there. I did. radius is done I feel like I got it nice and smooth and it went pretty quick the biggest problem is I had to keep blowing out sawdust that was sitting up on top of my line to keep my line nice and accurate this will be interesting the tighter radius might be a little bit more difficult That looks good. Definitely the way to cut it. So I got my initial cut done. It's nice and uh, accurate. I stayed on the measurement. So I'm going to mark this as my template. Just put template out there. And then I'm going to use this to uh, scribe or to mark the following 
I'm going to use this to mark the following uh, trusses that I'm going to cut. And I'm going to always use the template one. I don't want to cut another one and then use that and then cut another one use that to mark uh, the lines I want to draw because you can get cumulative error. If you use the same board as a template, you, your cut might be an eighth inch off one side and then an eighth inch off the other side on the next one, but they're always going to be really close. If you uh, cut another one and then use that, as I said, you could, might be an eighth inch larger one time and then an eighth inch larger the next time and pretty soon your boards start lined up. So use the, the same board as your template every time. Obviously due to the radius being tighter on the bottom and the top, well, there's going to be a little bit of waste. You can't just stack one arch right on top of the other. Okay, so I created a jig to fit this in. I've got two plies glued together. I thought I was going to do all four plies, but uh, trying to move them around and make sure that they didn't jostle too much, and then the next put the next one on, just figured it's going to be too hard. So uh, I put one ply on top of the other, put some glue down, screwed it down. I'm going to take the screws out tomorrow, put two more plies on top of that, Glue it, screw it down, and that should be permanent. One of the common questions I get on different projects is, well, how long does that take you? So I'm going to go ahead and cut one more piece of plywood. I'm going to put my template on there, mark it out, cut it, and see how long it takes. I'm not going to rush and hurry, I'm, but I'm not going to dilly-dally. I'm just going to do a normal cutting. Uh, it is getting a little bit slower. You can see that uh, my blade has been used so many times it's doling up a little bit. But uh, I'm probably buying a new one today. Uh, I'm going to be about halfway done with my trusses at the end of today. And it's time for a new blade so I can make my cuts a little quicker. So let's see how long this takes. While we're watching the time lapse of the marking and the cutting of this board, I will tell you that it took 18 minutes to mark it out and cut it. Uh, this project took approximately 30 sheets of plywood. So at 18 minutes a piece, that, that means I was uh, cutting marking and cutting uh, plywood for about 12 hours on this project. I didn't cut all these at once. Uh, it took about three sheets to get enough angles to build a single truss. So I cut enough arches that I could glue together to make a truss. And then I'd glue those together and let that dry and move it out of the way. And then I'd start again. Uh, you can see snow on the ground in the background. The rest of the Hobbit House build was uh, earlier, done earlier in the summer. And then uh, once I got the cinder block ready, done and ready to go, uh, I just decided I would try to build a truss a week during the winter uh, while I was teaching school and just coming home and work in the evenings and just get one done a week. And that would mean that when the weather gets nice and time to put the trusses up, I'd have them done. I don't know if you noticed when I was holding up my saw that I have a five and a half inch blade now on my circular saw and as opposed to the normal seven inch. Uh, by getting a slightly smaller diameter blade, it was easier to turn the corners and, while making the cuts. Right now I'm changing the battery on the saw. Each piece of plywood that I cut took at least two batteries, usually three. The gluing and screwing together of the trusses actually took longer than cutting out the pieces that I needed. Uh, some weeks I would be consistent working and get my truss done a week. Other times I didn't, wasn't consistent working and I, I would go a month before I finished one. But I did get it done before summer. I am sorry I had, I had intended to show you a lot more video of actually putting the pieces together to form the trusses. But from the time that I did the project to now that I'm editing it, it has been several months. And I must have lost some of that video. But you, you can see the jig. I showed you a picture or video of the jig that's on the floor. That jig is there so that every truss that I build bumps up against those boards that I have in there. And there's lines drawn. So I make sure I match. So every truss is built exactly the same or as close to exact as we can. Uh, so this is four pieces of plywood that I use. This is the thickness. I, I, what I did is on the jig, I put a row down. Made it sure that it was on the line exactly. Then I put construction adhesive, liquid nails construction adhesive. 
along both edges and zigzag through the middles. And then I put another row down. And then I attach them with inch and five eighths drywall screws, which go more than through the two layers that I had and screw it down and let that dry overnight. Then I'd back the screws back out and then I put two more layers with glue in between each layer and then screw the whole thing down. Now this inch and five eighths screw would just barely touch the last one. Uh, so it wasn't really holding it, but it was already glued together. And so while this is laying down, I would screw the entire top of it and this would be going through three of them. And then when I finished building the truss, it was laying down on the jig, I'd tip it up, turn it around, and then this side that doesn't have screws, I went and placed screws in. So there was approximately of these drywall screws, uh, I would say a hundred screws in each of the trusses. So besides the glue being there, there was a lot of strength added from the screws. And when they're coming in from one side and the other, they are both gripping at least two boards that the other screw from the other side is gripping. So I saved my original template board uh, that just in case I needed to match that arch or anything or make some more trusses or do another Hobbit house and I wanted to use it. But uh, the nailing pattern was I went across the top a little bit less than a foot each spot and then when this was a foot here and a foot here I did, created a triangle with the bottom side being about a foot in between and then within that triangle, I had another one centered. So there was a lot of screws in, the, in both sides of this truss. An important point for strength of the trusses, remember these trusses are going to be completely buried, earth on top of them when we're all done, is uh, you need to stagger the joints. So I have the template laying down here, and I have another small piece that's left behind. But uh, what I do is it takes about three pieces to get the whole arch. So you'd add another piece, and this would be cut so it would be flush, and then it'd be right uh, there continuing on. And then the next layer, I might take a piece like this and put the center of it right over the joint. And so when I screw that down, it adds strength, and in each layer, you try to make sure that the joint is in a different place from any other layer, and that allows for a lot more strength. So there you have it. You can see the Hobbit house continues to take shape. The trusses are up. It's buried. I've got the door on. Working on the river rock. Those are all be future episodes. But today's episode was building those trusses and the challenge that that was. Thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead, where Christmas trees are my business. Teaching, including horticulture, is my job. And outdoor projects are my passion. Hope to see you again soon. Be blessed, everyone.